In this video, I want to show you a calculus book that I have been reading. It's really quite interesting. It's really quite old. This book is called The Calculus, and it was written by Dalliker and Hartig. This book is a really good size. You can carry it around with you, and it's still quite affordable. You can probably get a copy for not too much. It is long out of print, um, so it's a little bit hard to find, but I'll try to leave a link in the description if I can find a copy available. But yeah, pretty cool book, and we're gonna talk about it in this video. So my copy has tons of writing on the inside, which is really, really cool. Looks like someone was drawing a picture of a woman. Perhaps that was them, or perhaps that was someone they knew, and they have something here that they need for Monday. Pretty interesting, right? It's really fun to see what you find in these old books. You can find all kinds of interesting things. What's this over here? Definition, y is a function of x. Cool, if when the value of x is given, the value of y is determined. Interesting. Nice cursive handwriting. Really awesome. My copy has tons of writing on the back cover here. So whoever owned this book and used it a long time ago actually wrote in the book. I feel like writing in this book now is just wrong. Um, even though this book is not really worth a lot of money or anything like that. To me, I think this book is incredible. It's just like a piece of history. I love these old books and I wonder who this person was that the previous owner kept drawing. Really weird. So I found this mysterious card in the book, which is really quite fascinating. So it says Princeton and it looks like it says April 8th and 1932. It says this side of card is for address. And there's a stamp here It says postal card, one cent Jefferson. There's some numbers there. And there's a person's name. It says Mr. D. E. Kidd. And then it says Princeton. Now there's a little piece of paper there. That's because I've covered up the address. So I Googled the address and there's actually still like an old historical house at that address. It just showed a picture of some random duplex, but I don't want to include that in the video because I don't want people like, you know, internet stalking, <laughs> whoever lives there now. The back is even more interesting. So this card says, to remind you of supper at the farm with Dean Wicks on April 8th. Meet at South Transept entrance to the chapel at 620. Interesting, right? Very interesting. It's really fun to see the kinds of things you find in these old books. The Calculus by Hans Dolliker, PhD, professor of mathematics and mechanics, University of Minnesota, and Henry Hartig, PhD, Electrical Engineering Department, University of Minnesota. And this is the first edition, the second impression, 1930. So this was during uh, the Great Depression, right? The stock market crashed in 1929. Here you can see the preface is actually dated December 1929. So this was after the big crash in the stock market, which led to the Great Depression. So this is a depression era uh, calculus book, which is really interesting. The contents themselves are quite standard. However, there are some topics that are covered that you wouldn't expect. For example, it's mostly Calculus 1 topics, as you can see, but then you've got some Calc 2 stuff mixed in here, and then you've got some Calc 3. You've got some partial uh, differentiation, some iterated integrals, double and triple integrals, and here's the rest of the content. So you see it covers quite a bit of mathematics uh, in a really small book. So you've got Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3 topics in this little book. I've read quite a few chapters from this book and I've done several of the exercises and I would say it reads really well. It's very different from other textbooks because it explains things in words instead of symbols. And that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Here's the section where it introduces limits. It says limit of a variable. If x varies in such a way that x minus alpha, where alpha is a constant, finally becomes and stays numerically less than any positive number, however small, x is said to approach alpha as a limit. We shall use x approaches alpha as the abbreviation for x approaches alpha as a limit. And so basically it's saying um, that when x minus alpha becomes small, as small as you like, we say that x approaches alpha, and then it defines limits using the same language, so it's probably not something that you're used to seeing in a modern book, but I think that's good for you. I think it's good to get 
different approaches. Here they talk about the concept of infinity, a variable v which becomes greater than any positive number, however large, is said to increase without limit or to become infinite. This we shall symbolize by, and then we have the symbol v approaching infinity. A variable v which becomes less than any negative number, however small, is said to decrease without limit or to become negatively infinite. This is symbolized by v approaches negative infinity. Then here it makes a really good point. The student should observe that the symbol infinity does not represent a number. Statements like 4 divided by infinity equals 0 should therefore be avoided. Moreover, if v approaches infinity, infinity should not be thought of as the limit of v. A limit is always a definite number. Some of the exercises have answers, but not all of them. It's pretty random. And whenever you see answers to the exercises, they appear right next to the exercises. So here you see all of these are pretty much worked out. And then here you have answers. And you're going to love this. Wait till I turn the page. Look at this. Look at all of these problems with solutions in this old book from 1930. I mean, completely ridiculous. There are so many problems here. And you have answers to all of them. Not just the even or the odd ones, but every single one. Yeah, wow. And there's more. I mean, does it ever end? So many worked examples. Just so many integrals in this super old book. For me, what I really love about this book is the size, the smell, and the fact that it's written a little bit differently. I just gotta get a whiff here. Ah, oh, yeah, wow, what a book. Here you can see chapter 10 has the formulas for differentiation. So this book is basically an old version of what students use today in college. So for example, it's like an old version of Stewart's book or Larson's book, but you can see it's much smaller, um, it's easier to carry around, and it has a lot less illustrations, and it does have uh, less topics, perhaps, than what you would see in those modern books. It is a much smaller book. Yeah, much, much smaller. Look, at the, look how thick it is. It's really not that thick compared to the newer books. You do get topics in old books that you don't find in newer books, which I think is really cool. Another thing I really like about this book is how small the chapters are, so you can sit down, you can read through the chapter, and then you can just jump into the exercises and you can work through them. I think that's really cool and really quite fun. Here it talks about the ratio test and it mentions that it's probably the most useful convergence test for series. And honestly, I agree. Whenever you're looking for the radius of convergence of a power series, you usually start with the ratio test because it's probably one of the most useful out there. So kind of cool that the author mentions that. Then they give a proof of the ratio test. This is where the author is to find the triple integral. You can see there's a really fancy drawing here in the book. And I wonder how this was created because this was from an era long before computers. I really don't know much about how books are printed or how they're created, but this is, again, from an old era, 1930. Here are some of the exercises from the very first section. And I thought that they were actually quite challenging for the material presented in the book. Nevertheless, I do think this is a great book to read and work through because you're going to get something out of it. It's definitely written in a different fashion than modern books are. Chapter 13 is on applications to geometry rectangular coordinates. And you can see here it talks about the tangent line to a curve. It's got a little derivation. The line normal to a curve. The line cutting a curve at a given angle. The length of a subtangent and the length of a subnormal. And that's it, right? That's it, that's the whole section. And then you've got the exercises with answers, which is really cool. I feel like you can sit down, you know, for 20, 30 minutes, read the section, work out a couple problems, and you're just gonna come away a little bit better. You're gonna know some stuff that you didn't know before. Overall, I think this is a really good book. If you can find a copy, I will try to leave a link in the description. I'm pretty sure this book is long out of print. It has not been reprinted to my knowledge. And it's just a fun little calculus book. I think the audience of this book is anyone who wants to learn calculus. If you're taking calculus or you want to learn some calculus, it's a pretty good starting point. It's not a perfect book. I like it because the size is great. It smells, I just gotta give it another whiff here. Ah, oh, smells amazing. I like that it has answers and I like that it has like interesting problems that you don't see in other books. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this book. I really like it. And I really wasn't sure what to expect when I bought it. So very, very happy with it. And currently it's very inexpensive. So if you can find a copy, you can probably get it pretty cheap. Yep, it's The Calculus by Dalliker and Hartig. It's a depression era book, right? Published 
uh, probably right after or near the time the stock market crashed in 1929, because the preface is dated December 29. I don't really know the exact month of the stock market crash, but the United States uh, of America entered a really rough time there, right? It was the Depression, and this was the book that people were using then in school. Kind of interesting. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.